Hello and welcome back to the basics. A lot has changed in the Dynamics world over the years, so we'd like to revisit the fundamentals in Dynamics 365 and essentially the Power Platform. I'll be going over the different ways to access your environments and apps, navigation, and basic terminology. My name is Angelina Jacobs, and I'm a consultant at Serum Dynamics located in Ontario, Canada. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn, shoot me a message if you have any questions, or just to let me know how your CRM journey is going. All right, let's get started. There are many ways you can access your environments and the apps within. I'll be approaching it from the Office 365 starting point, but we'll point out the other ways you could go about it. If ever in doubt, just go to office.com. You can take it one tiny step further, as you can see on my screen here, and go to office.com slash apps. That will take you to your one-stop shop that you see here on the screen. What you have access to will depend on your licenses and roles, and in this session it's showing quite a lot, but that's because I'm signed in as a system admin. A quick overview of some of the areas within here. You've got your admin area. This is the admin area for the Office 365, whether SharePoint, Azure, as well as when we get into what's referred to as a Power Platform for our environment management. The Power Apps area here, we'll be going into this if you were going to be doing any configuration or customization to your apps. Power Automate, some of you might be familiar with this already, and the flows, but this has essentially replaced the classic workflows you might have been used to in the CRM and Dynamics 365. And then you have other Microsoft apps here. Under the Business Apps area where we're going to start, these are those specific CRM or Dynamics 365 areas that you might have been used to in classic versions. So for example, I've got my Sales Hub, there's a Customer Service Hub, Field Service, and so forth, depending on the apps as well as the licensing and roles that you have. We're going to get started just by going into the Sales Hub. Your navigation within the app is located here on the left side, also referred to as the site map. These are your different areas like your dashboards, activities, um, other entities or tables as I'll refer to them, um, like your accounts, contacts, leads, opportunity, and so forth. Down here at the bottom left, this is where you can change the area within the app. So this could be app settings, this could be additional kind of back-end areas if someone were to customize the app. One thing I do want to point out though is this isn't the same as classic versions where you might be used to seeing the sales, marketing, customer service drop-downs. Those are actually now in their own separate apps. You could configure this app or a completely new custom model driven app that would include all the sales, marketing, customer service areas all in one, but that's certainly up to your system admin or system customizer. Coming back up to the top ribbon here, you'll see this search bar uh, in the middle. This may not be in all environments, and that's just because it's what's referred to as relevant search. This is a setting that you can turn on per environment, and it's just a different search capability of the system. If relevant search is not on, you will most likely see this little search icon over here with the other icons on the right. Pretty standard, not too much has changed here in terms of your quick creates, you know, your options, as well as your lovely advanced find. You'll notice how we've been in the unified client interface, but advanced find still launches you into this classic interface here that we are so used to. And this is where you could build out those custom views or sorry personal views uh, any ad hoc reporting you know if you just needed to do some ad hoc reporting and then export it to Excel advanced find is where you do that
This gearbox here, I often point out the personalization settings for all users and recommend you go in there just for a couple keeps update like how many records you can see per page, what your home page is every time you log in, and that is per individual so they can change some of those settings. The advanced settings here, this actually opens up into the classic interface and what we can now refer to as kind of the old school settings area. While it's nice to have because there are still certain things you have to do within the classic version, I don't recommend this as your go-to for any configurations and I will show you uh, shortly where that will be done and it's just so that you can get used to the new customization area which we will refer to as the Power Apps Maker Portal. So for those that have been on previous versions of Dynamics 365, this is a very familiar area where you have this drop down settings area and then within here you have the different options or areas to go to within settings. Again, there are certain things you still have to go into this classic version uh, to do, but I wouldn't recommend it as your first go to. I'm going to exit out of that and come back to my app. Now let's say you're someone who does crossover between sales and customer service. Well by default you have your sales hub app and then you have your customer service hub app. And then let's just say you, there hasn't been customization um, or a brand new app created to include both of those areas within one. The way that you can navigate to the other app is quite easy just by clicking up here where the sales hub title is and this launches your app page. So you can see here based on licensing and access I have quite a few different apps here but this could differ per user. So I could go from sales back into customer service hub here if I was dealing with cases or knowledge articles anything that would be pertaining to the customer service area. You could also have both these apps, oh, uh, sorry, bo have both the customer service hub and the sales hub app open in different tabs too. I'm going to jump back into my sales hub. And we're just going to do a quick run through of the entities and some terminology in here into the table here, accounts, you have your views and the records that make up these views, each line item, and then the fields within which are the columns. I've just used interchangeable terms here but I want to point out the official Microsoft references. So you have your records which are referred to as rows. You have the specific fields within each, so phone number, address, those are referred to as columns. And then let's jump into one record or row here. Now there are different field types or column types and one of the other changes is the terminology for option sets or pick lists. So these drop down menus, or in this case this popped up, but these are now referred to as choice. I have one choice I can choose from. The multi-select option sets or multi-select pick list we were used to, those are just referred to as choices because you can select more than one. The timeline has had a few minor changes, not just in aesthetics here, but in functionality. So with your timeline, you can create your different activities, your notes with attachments and other posts. You do have a nice filtering capability. So within the timeline, you could filter by record type, like the different activity types. If you wanted to just look at the emails or just look at the tasks or phone calls, you could do that right within here, within the record.
I won't touch too much on the actual interface. We do have other videos that do talk about the unified client interface. For those of you that maybe are still used to the classic web version, uh, this could be if you're on-prem. Um, otherwise, any cloud ones have been uh, transitioned over into unified interface, so most people within Dynamics 365 should be used to this new unified interface. I'm now actually going to get out of my app and go back to my Office Apps landing page. Let's say you were a system customizer, system administrator, you know, you're a functional consultant who wants to do some customization or configuration on the CRM systems. From this landing page, you'd want to go to the Power Apps area. You may have noticed in my bookmarks bar up here, there are usually three to four key areas that I bookmark, and one of them is the Power Apps area. This is a URL you'll start to just know by heart. Make.powerapps.com. And this is like the area you used to go to to customize the system and launch the default solution or create new solutions. So again, it's make.powerapps.com, but again, you can go from the Office Apps landing page right into the Power Apps area. A couple things to point out here. When you first get into the Power Apps area, please look at the environment that you're in. This could differ depending if you have multiple sandbox or development environments, production, so forth. So you always want to look at what environment you're in. And you'll see here I have a different CRM environment I want to go into. And then I can go into the solutions area. Depending what you already have in your environment, you might have different solutions already in here. If I scroll all the way down to the bottom, I do have the default solution here, but unlike the classic version, you don't want to actually do your configuration in here. You should be creating a new solution that can then house just the specific configurations and customizations that you're doing so that you can then import, export uh, into different environments. Very easy to do. You can just go new solution. Or in this case, I already have a sales solution I can go into. And you can see here I've already added a few different tables, or again, entities as we used to call them, but you'll see in the type column it actually labels a table. You can also add in those model-driven apps that I referred to, so like Customer Service Hub or Sales Hub. Often you'll see these in solutions, especially if someone is revising the sitemap. So again, that navigation on the left side. It's a lot easier to do those types of configurations now than it used to be. I'll quickly hop into one of these tables just to show you the different field types. If you're interested in further more advanced configuration, I do suggest to check out our other videos because we do have specific ones devoted to configuring and customizing your model-driven apps. These two fields here should be relatively uh, known by most in the Dynamics 365 space, and that's the status and status code. So these used to be what we refer to as option sets or pick lists. You'll see here they're called choice. And then again, if you were to have a multi-select option set, that's now going to be called choices. For any of those two option set lists, so where it was yes or no, true or false, those actually are now called yes or no fields. I'm not going to dive too much further into solutions and configuration because I am going to end on the environment management.
Again, I'm going back to my Office Apps landing page. I'll show you the longer route to get to this admin area. Now, not everyone will have access to the admin area uh, because it is for the full tenant here. But for myself, I want to show all the different admin centers I can manage. And this is where I was saying you could have, you know, SharePoint, Exchange, Teams. Again, it all depends on who's managing what. I actually want the Power Apps. So this would be what you might be familiar with for um, previous versions where it was Dynamics 365. It's now under the Power Apps area. And you can see here where it talks about the Power Platform Admin Center. So let's go into that. You may have noticed already in my bookmarks bar, along with the make.powerapps, I do always go and bookmark the admin.power platform. So another URL you might become very familiar with and know by heart. This will list any environments that you have, whether they're sandbox production or in this case, just a trial demo one. Clicking into the environment, brings you into the settings area or overview of this environment I should say. This is where you will see any updates that have been enabled so when the release wave 1 and release wave 2 um, are available you can see if those are turned on or not. You have your other resources here so your Dynamics 365 apps like the Sales Hub Customer Service Hub, if you have any portals, Power apps, this can be not just the model driven ones that we refer to as Dynamics 365 apps, but your actual power apps um, that are Canvas apps. And then the flows, that's the Power Automate piece. Up here is the access area um, that many may be used to accessing within the actual Dynamics environment, but you can get to it right from here. So like your security roles, any team setups, and the users within. Another way you can get at this and to other uh, settings of your environment is, of course, in the settings area up here. This is a lot of where those business management or system administration areas of the classic versions would get to. So in this case, you know, any behavior or feature uh, areas, so you can turn on and off any of those features. If you're setting any calendar, business hours, um, and queues within your environment, you can do that here. Here's that other area for user and permissions management. So just another way to get at that. And then, of course, you can see templates, audit, and then some of these other familiar areas like setting up email, uh, mailboxes. So if you were using the Outlook app for Dynamics 365, you'd want to make sure you go to your mailboxes, approve them, and test and enable. Data management is another key area for those who do any imports or duplicate detection. That's all done within here. Similar to the advanced settings area I showed you within the app, you can still get to those legacy or classic version settings from here as well. Again, there are still things you do have to go to this area to do because it's not quite all in that Power Platform Admin Center or the Power Apps Maker portals just yet, but I do suggest starting in the new areas to become familiar with them because there will come a time where we won't have access to this. And that brings us to the end of our Back to Basics Dynamics 365 Fundamentals for 2021. Thanks for watching, and please, if you have questions, reach out to us on our social channels, shoot me a message via LinkedIn, or visit our website for more information.